concern, boys, is this defense has gone two games with Vaughn Miller and Bradley Chubb on the edge, not a single sack, not a single takeaway. I mean, they didn't even hit their card week one. They at least got a couple of hits on Mitch Trubisky in week two, but they didn't even hit their card in week one. Yeah, that was a big surprise for me, Chad, is with, with that tandem. I mean, you look last year, the numbers they had, I understand it's a different defense, but it's still the same role. You go after the quarterback. Um, maybe it's, and that's the thing is, I mean, now you're going up well, against a Packers question. O-line. Here's oh, my hold question. on, hold Sorry on, hold I just, on. I want to know. Nope. Go ahead, Dave. <laughs> I was going to say we have two tackles that are are studs, and one was healthy. Bulag is a stud. David, ba- David Bakhtiari is graded as the number one overall tackle. So, I mean, now do you think they get a sack on Rodgers, or do you think yeah. they still have a tough time because it's still a tough test coming up? I think there's two things that are pointing in the Broncos' favor of finally breaking the ice. And that is, one, the law of averages. That's a real thing. I mean, Von Miller has only one other time in his career gone two games without matching a sack. And so something's got to give there. I think you're going to finally see some things come together at the point of attack. And one of the reasons why, well, I should say, there's two reasons why I think that law of averages is going to finally come through for Denver in week three. Number one, they're getting their best run-stuffing linebacker uh, finally back into the lineup. Todd Davis has missed the first two weeks, and you think, well, how is that going to affect the pass rush? One of the reasons Vaughn and Chubb have been neutered thus far is because they can't stop the run on first and second down, so opposing teams, they're getting into third and three, third and two, third and one, where the entire playbook is open, and the front seven, the linebackers on the outside and off ball, they have to stay disciplined because it could be a run, it could be a pass. They can't pin their ears back and just go and that's been one of the mitigating factors here. Getting Todd Davis back, you're going to see them, I think, be more stiff against the run. And then the other aspect is Aaron Rodgers, they're well aware. I just talked to a beat reporter in Green Bay earlier today, a friend of mine, and he said that they've been talking about how opposing teams are getting after the Broncos and neutering Vaughn and Chubb by getting rid of the ball, quick passes, quick passes. So you know that the Packers are going to try that, but Aaron Rodgers is one of those quarterbacks that holds on to the ball. And most of the time, it, it, it pans out, and it's, it, the Packers get big plays and get a lot of points. But sometimes, as we saw in, back in Week 8 when the Broncos hosted the Packers in 2015, you know, that could be a detriment. So I think there's, this is one of those kind of uh, – sure, the law of average is going to come into play, but the, it's kind of a confluence of events. The Broncos might not win this game, and I'm not even saying I'm picking them to win, but I think you're finally going to see him sack a quarterback this week. Well, here was my question about the outside and the edge rushers being part of the problem. And I guess you answered part of it, but do you feel that the interior defensive line is comfortable enough in their new role that they're doing their job sufficient enough to eat up the blocks to give those guys enough when they get those? Because I understand what you're saying about third and short. That does neuter pass rushers because – you are absolutely right. They have to play the run and the pass. You can't. But when they have gotten those opportunities, which they've been a few and yeah. far between, but do you feel like your interior push is not as sufficient enough to give those guys enough one-on-one opportunities to even get there when they've had those chances? Because there used to be, you know, you, you've had some pretty good defensive tackles rolled through through the years, but now you're also asking a guy to play zero technique and really – force a double team to, you know, create one-on-ones yep. elsewhere. That's a totally different ask from somebody if they're not used to doing that. You know, Derek Wolf used to be an above-average five-tech pass rusher. You know, he, he could rush from the five, he could rush from the three and generate some pressure on nickel situations. That's kind of, that's kind of gone away. You know, the older he's gotten, the less he's been able to bring to the table, but they still keep him on the field on third down. Shelby Harris the last two, the last two years, he's been a rotational depth guy. But every time he's been on the field in years past, he's he's found a way to impact the play. I mean, he was second on the team in 2017 in sacks behind Von Miller. As a depth guy, he had five and a half sacks. We've expected to see him take that step forward this year because now he's a starter. He's the starting nose tackle, Shelby Harris in Denver. But with, I don't know if it's just learning this new scheme or the way this Fangio two-gap works. They're not 
they're still thinking too much or they're not yet confident in what they're supposed to do in their assignments. I don't know what it is, but there has been, guys, zero interior push. And sure, that's affected things. That absolutely has played a part. Now, do you think with Vic Fangio having all this experience against Rodgers from the 49ers rivalry that he had with Green Bay, Bears defensive coordinator playing him twice a year, I mean, do you think he has a little bit of an upper hand here on Rodgers because he's kind of been the Rodgers whisperer a little bit? You know, I don't know about upper hand. It does give him a slight advantage compared to a normal opponent. Like if he's going against Phillip Rivers this week, he's got at least a four-year familiarity of playing Rodgers twice, you know, every season. So that, that that's a plus, but Rodgers is such a creator. He's such an improviser. You just, you know, it only can help you so far. I think it's helpful, but I was I was talking to uh, a friend of mine that covers the Packers there, and, and, you know, they have a lot of respect for Fangio, and they say that between him and Mike Zimmer, you know, that's those have been the two guys who over the years have really found a way to kind of stymie Aaron Rodgers. So I think it's a, it's a plus, but it's not something the team can really hang its hat on. Well, I was going to mention the fact that there's there's two things about about this. I can tell you this right now. As far as sacks going, you're going to get two. Because even Aaron improved greatly. We, we were really harping on him uh, a couple weeks ago after week one about well, We were really bad after bad. On week one. Like, well, because the tape, <laughs> like Chad, the tape showed it was, it was everything that people have been worried about. It was not hitting open guys, holding the ball, uh, trying to do things, and nothing was there. I mean, just taking good plays and just turning them into terrible plays that ended up, you know, instead of a two-yard gain, it was a 12-yard loss. We were just hard on. Last week, though, Chad, he was almost impeccable. The mechanics were perfect. If the, he was supposed to hit a dump off or a flat guy, he hit him on time in rhythm. We it haven't seen beautiful. Aaron hit a check down in like two years, and he did at least a ten of them that game. Here's the thing. Here's the thing, though. They had two sacks, and it was on plays where the 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 young receiver didn't do the right route combination quite right, mm. and it threw the timing off. And instead of just going to his next read. He went into that, and he gave up a sack. So I can tell you this. As great as Aaron will play in a system, he's going to give you two, okay? And and I think it's going to be almost a thing all year. No matter what, I think you're going to get – now, whether or not that team capitalizes on it or not, I think from what I've seen just in two weeks – and, again, it's only two weeks, Chad, but I think you got yeah. a chance for at least two. And I think you're good enough that you'll get those two – other than that, I don't know what to tell you. It, it could be he could go back to week one for all I know, but he is at home, and I think after last week's success, that's something to build on. But I think at the very least, you're definitely going to get two or at least a good chance to get those two. So I wouldn't worry too much about the sack thing, man. Yeah. You know what, Chad? I, I, I do. Uh, I know you have to get out of here in a little bit, but I'm going to jump right to it. Who wins? Who's the MVP of the game, and what's the final score? Guys, I'm going to answer that question. Let me just say one thing real quick before I do. Is I got to tell you, I have been, I've always been a low key big fan of Mike Pettin, and they finally got the talent it seems in the right places for this defense to flourish under Pettin. I mean, they're they're the second ranked scoring defense now. I... Hello. Can you hear me? Yeah, uh, you broke up a little bit. Oh, sorry, guys. Sorry, guys. I was just saying, uh, Mike Fenton, you know, he finally has the he finally has the talent around him, and the, the Packers are relinquishing less than 10 points a game. And so I'm worried about a Broncos offense that has really struggled against a great defense last week in Chicago and a surprisingly good or at least amped up defense in week one in Oakland. That's where I'm not sure what to expect here. Cause can can I just be defense... devil's advocate here, Chad? Yeah, you, sure. You do, you do realize that these teams played head to head, and the Packers' defense outshined them on on the field on their home turf. So for me, if you're going to call the Bears' defense for this year in for two weeks, if you're going to call them elite, you have to say that about the Packers because they were on uh, on the field at the same time in the same game. 
and 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 they had home turf advantage to be comfortable and the Packers defense statistically and just watching the game outperformed them man just I mean so yeah. you got to be fair there if if you're going to call them elite then the way the Packers and this again it's only 2 weeks so I'm going to keep saying that cuz I I really believe people need to just be in reality this is only being done off of 2 weeks just for now Chad, do you expect any sacks from the Packers defense <laughs> on the old line or no yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. The Packers are going to eat. Darius Smith, Preston Smith, they're going to get a couple of sacks. I mean, Garrett Bowles, even when he's not holding, his technique is so disgustingly incompetent. Even Mike Munch. Not a big fan, huh? You can't, you can't fix this guy, you know? You can't fix him. So, wow. yeah, they're going to be sacks. And honestly, here's my prediction, guys. If the, the, I think the Broncos are going to keep this close. I think they're going to find a way late in the game to shoot themselves in the foot. And they're going to lose, but there is, it's going to be a, a three day, a three point or less margin. That's my bet. Packers win three points or less, and I think the MVP. Uh, I mean, MVP. It's probably going to end up being a defensive guy that's going to make Garrett Bowles look even more incompetent. But yeah, I'm not. I'm not too. I think about playing tough, and I think that people are sleeping on them. But ultimately, in Lambo, I just don't see it happening for Denver this week. Jay, do you want to give yours? Well, I always go last, so. Okay, then I'll go. So, that's the thing, is what you kind of named it, that offensive line is, for Denver, is a little, uh, got some holes here and there, and especially Bulls being that left tackle, the that blind side. I mean, if, I mean, you respect Pat, and you know as well as anybody, if he smells blood in the water, he's going to send it every single play on that on that side. So I just, yeah, I, I see corner blitzes. Um, I see safety blitzes off the edge to where they're free. Um, I think Packers end up winning uh, 23 to 10. Don't hurt me, Chad. I just, I, I got to see more out of the offense for, for Flacco. Because, yeah. It's just the whole rhythm thing. Yeah, and it's the it's same thing with the Packers. They put it together for a whole first quarter and then just kind of <laughs> disappeared yep. for the rest of the three against Minnesota. So, I mean, it's kind of reversed. We did the first quarter, first quarter. You guys did it for the fourth quarter. So, I just feel the defense is going to help put um, the offense in better positions on field, and we're going to end up putting points up that way. Fair enough. Just remember, boys, the law of averages. I know. Oh, my MVP is going to be Devontae Adams. I think he gets a touchdown or two in this game. All right. Okay. Well, initially, honestly, before, during, back in preseason when we talked about this, Chad, I actually had the Packers losing this game. All right. But. Ooh. That was well. That's because I, I I expected the defense to be good. I did not expect it to do like outperform the Bears, like I just said. Like I didn't think it would be this level this quick. Like that really, it's it shocked the hell out of me. We and thought there was going to be a growing period yeah, of we, six we, games, yeah, probably. Yeah. We we thought the whole team was going to need to grow together, but that the defense was going to kind of carry him. I did not see this type of defensive performance. That being said, that's it's just and what I've seen from the Broncos. I I'm going to say. 28-15 cuz they ain't gave up more than 16 points yet. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, and I just don't see it happening yet. The defense is just man, they're just good. And and I yeah, think, We love you, buddy. <laughs> I I think honestly, and I'm going to say this, I'm also going to say this. I wouldn't be surprised if the offense only scores 21 and that seven of those points come from a defensive turnover. Just so that it's not all offensive. Yeah, I, that wouldn't surprise me either. The Broncos have, have done a pretty good job protecting the ball thus far. Only one turnover, and it was Joe Flacco throwing a pick in the red zone on third down. But they've been they've been pretty smart with the football thus far. Flacco's a pretty cautious thrower, but it wouldn't surprise me. I mean, that's the thing about the NFL, you guys, and it's one of the things, one of the reasons why we all love it as much as we do is it's the old any given Sunday cliche. Yep, you know, never know what's going to happen. Parity reigns supreme in the NFL, and so that's why I think we're all going to look, you know, look forward to watching this thing unfold. Well, I will say this: I, I, I hope that even if the score is what I think it's going to be, 
that that score gets stretched out towards the tail end of the game so that the rest of the game is a very entertaining game for both our fan bases. Because I hate games.